Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in this week's unique training, we're gonna be taking a stale, old, useless, scanned in PDF form and bringing it to life, making it completely fillable and then automating the fill process with our students and our table. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna email each one and we're gonna be able to do that for unlimited templates, saving our templates so that we can create unlimited forms unlimited data. It's going to be an incredible training, so let's get started. All right, thanks once again from scratch. We are solving a big problem today. We're going to take these old forms, something that you can't do much with, and a form like this where there are no fields. It's just a scanned in form, and your boss tells you, I need all of these. I've got 500 students. I want all of these forms filled in, and I want all these forms emailed to our students so that they can simply select it. But there's nothing we can do. It's a scanned in form. Well, today that changes. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this form, making it fillable with free software we're then going to bring that form into excel with few little macros we're going to take our data fill in the form and then create customizable emails and automatically send those forms to our students all with a click of a button and that's not enough what we're going to do is we're going to create a system that we can do this for multiple forms multiple templates in fact unlimited templates in our little template manager that we're going to create i'm going to do that all right in front of you so take notes keep Make sure you download this application. I'll include it free with the links below. Let's get started. Before I do, I want to make sure you know that we create these videos each and every Tuesday. So if you have not done so yet, please make sure you subscribe. Click on the notifications icon bell. That'll ensure that you get these training each and every Tuesday when I release them. I would not want you to miss a training. And if you do like these videos, in fact, I've got 100 applications of my absolute best applications on sale for just $37. I'm gonna to try to keep that price as long as I can. So if you don't wanna download each and every one of them, you wanna see my 100 best, go ahead and click the link below I'll include that and if you're a really good developer some of our best developers are taking their Excel skills and turning it into massive online profits where they can simply get reoccurring profits by creating a system in which I show you that I've done in the past where I've taken my applications and create a system we're doing that inside the mentorship program so if that's something you want to see and learn how to, to define design develop and deploy your own excel applications the excel for freelancers mentorship program might be right for you check it out i'll include the links down below you can also visit us at my excel mentor i'll include all the links there for you all right thanks i'm glad we got that done i can't wait to get started we got so much to cover so what we're going to be is we're going to be taking this pdf form it is not fillable there's nothing we can do it's just an old ugly form that i created and what i want to do is i want to bring it to life i want to make it fillable i want to put in the student name the student email and the phone number i'm going to send it email it off to our students so they can fill it out and send it back but how do we do this we've got a basically a form so let's get started on that where did this idea come from i get off and ask where do my ideas come from? Well, actually, a lot of them come from our Excel for Freelancers Facebook group. With over 26,000 members, this is the group that's going to solve your issues. We've got tons and tons of great content in this group. So if you haven't a member yet, please join. Of course, it's free. And this particular question comes from Daniel Lee. He says in our group, hey, all I need to turn both of these forms into electronic forms. And when they print, I would like to see them to a PDF. I've included my form. So he's got basically these forms here. They're uh, basically old. So how does he take this form here? It's just a stagnant scanned in form and bring it to life. How does he make it fillable? How can he automate if he's got a database of 500,000 or 500,000? How can you get all that data into the forms? And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. It would work for any any particular form, so it's great. You would want to make sure it's a little bit of clear scanned in form. The more clear, the better, but either way, it's going to work no problem. So how do we do that? What is the first step that we need to go through? Well, we need to take this stagnant form that I have that I just showed you, and we need to bring it into a software that's going to help us. And 
it's a free software of course I don't make you pay for anything here if I can help it I always want to try to get you the free software so I did find this one called PDF escape just you will need to sign up give me your email address and name and stuff like that but otherwise it is free and it's it's a really good software it's not the most beautiful it seems a little bit like 10 to 15 years old but it works great so let me show you how to do that PDF escape I'll make sure to include the links in the application download PDF escape if, it's great it works great so I've already signed up I've got I'm logged into my account here so I've got everything so what do I want to do I basically want to open a document so let's do that let's click open and find out so all we need to do is create a upload an existing PDF to escape so that's what I want to do and I've got my PDF right here I've called it workshop enrollment form this is the one I just showed you which is basically not fillable currently so I'm gonna drag that in here and once it's dragged in here it's going to process it and create a form and there's my form as you can see there's no fields nothing we can do here so how do we make it fillable quite simple so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here in the insert and I want to click a form field that's what we're looking at form field and then we're going to get some options we have text text paragraph checkbox radio drop down list box reset button and submit so let's go with text that's what we're going to be using at this for these fields and click select and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this around over here something about like this all right just we can type a few letters in here make sure it's good okay so what do I want to do now now what I want to do is I want to duplicate this and the best way to duplicate it is just to right click on and duplicate it and I'm gonna drag it right down here make sure the letters are over the numbers in the same size that looks good I'm gonna do right click do one more time and then I'm going to duplicate it for this I'm gonna bring this field a little bit less a little bit smaller of a field so we can line up our fields pretty easily one more time I'm gonna duplicate it. I wish control D worked it doesn't so we're gonna duplicate it here and uh, it's not the prettiest website but it does a fine job so that's fine okay so now that I have everything lined up let's just clear the text we don't need the text in there right now so we'll clear the text that we just created but it was helpful for lining it up on the line 18 font now what do I want now I want students to be able to check which sessions that they want so I want a checkbox in here so let's go back into the form field and we'll click on checkbox here and click select we're gonna do the same thing here we're just gonna draw a little checkbox that looks good right there maybe a little bit big so we'll bring it down here a little bit and also the same thing what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to right click and then duplicate and I'm gonna do the same thing for each of the fields so that that's it this is a relatively simple form your your forms are probably going to be much more complex but for training purposes I just wanted to keep it something simple so that uh, you can see how it's done but we don't get too much involved in the form creation and more focused on the macro so as I duplicate these we can see and then it's going to be done then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear those check boxes out so we have a nice clear form this form can be read by any PDF reader I've tried it with Adobe Foxit and a few others and it seems to work just fine and the tab order is automated also based on when you've created them so now I can just select these and it's going to clear the checkbox and we're pretty much done I wish this had something like a lineup I looked for it I couldn't find it you know as far as to line up these shapes so you kind of got to visually it's visually create it here all right I think we're we're good it's not great but it, you get the point okay so I wish it had something to line it up that would be nice so I've created three of uh, five different fields I've created five four text fields and then a lot of check boxes here we are good to go that's it that's all we need to do so I'm gonna save it that saves it to our account and then I'm gonna download it perfect okay good so now I've got it and now let's let's open it up here in our PDF and let's take a look at it make sure the tabs are right we can see the fields test test okay that looks good and then it the, the tab board is right everything looks good they're not lined up but for our purposes it's fine so now what do I want to do now I want to create an Excel I want to create an application that's going to put in the student name email and phone number and so we can close that out in fact let me go ahead and trick take that from my downloads I've got it already but that's okay I know where it is so I'm just going to close this out we're good to go it opens in the browser or in your Fox either one it's going to be fine PDF we're good with that right now so we can close that out in Excel what do I have here in fact let me just pull that from my I got it in my downloads here here's the one I just created I'm gonna put that in the create and fill I think we got the same name on that okay so this is the one we're working on the one that's four so I'm gonna delete that's okay I'll keep it as four right now so I know which one that's the one we just created the one that says four which is fine let's just 
rename that, I'm gonna call it to fillable because it is now fillable, which is a really great, you can create more forms. Okay, so we have our fillable, we know which one it is that's fillable. And remember, this is our static one here that doesn't have any, and this is the one we just created. And this one's now completely fillable. As we tab through these, we can see that it's now fillable. Okay, great, that's exactly what we want. Let's get into designing this application. And this is gonna be a relatively simple application. We've got a list of students here, and basically what I want to do is I want to email all the students that do not have a workshop email sent. So how do we do that? Well, we create a template, not just a simple template, but what I want to do is I want to create an application that can combine multiple templates or even unlimited templates because you may have different PDF forms. So how do we handle different PDF forms in the same application? This application will solve that problem, be able to create unlimited PDFs, unlimited automation, unlimited emails with your PDFs that are static and now fillable. Okay, so we're gonna color the first two columns gray. Also, I had a question uh, coming up from one of the users that said, how do you have different colors than I do? Well, I'm using themes and often I'll use different themes. So how do you get it? I'm using EFF theme in this case, but I have multiple themes. It's just an automated theme that I have. But you'll notice that there's different themes, different colors. If you want to know what colors I'm using, just use, you can see which other colors. I'm using the elemental color theme in this particular training, but I'll switch it up so that they all don't look the same. Again, just like with the others, what I'll do is I'll color the first row, just give it a basically a fade out. So I'm going to go into the fill and give it a fill effects. And we're not going to spend too much time on this one because the meat of this is going to be in the automation. But I do want to make it look a little bit professional. And that way you can get used to how I design it. But you, I want to see your own designs. You don't, certainly don't need to design them as I do. But something uh, a little bit nice of professional, especially if you're going to be bringing this to your clients. You want to give them something. All right, we'll just color the rest of this uh, blue, this blue color. And then we can get on to creating some of the fields. There's not a whole lot of fields, but you get the idea. Now we have a nice fade effect. What's the first field that I want? Let's give it a title here. We're going to call this create fill and email PDFs. Okay, so that's basically what I want to call it. Let's uh, form, bring the increase to this a little bit, and then I'll just give it one of my favorite fonts. Probably we'll go with, again, Arial Rounded Bold. I like that one. And a color, something similar to the theme, which would be this down here. Okay, so what's the first field that I want to create? I want to create a field, uh, probably call it Template Name, because I want a name for each of the templates, and I also want a specific macro to run for each template, macro to run, because each template may have its own macro because it's its own mod auto Automation. Also, we need to know the location of that PDF template location because if we're going to be pulling it up, we need to understand the location. That could be a larger field, so we'll keep that on its own line. I want an email subject. We're going to be uh, sending a subject email to our uh, contacts or students or whoever. You want to make sure that you have that field and the message, of course. That's pretty much it. I'm going to keep the fields to the simple. I'm going to keep it relatively simple. And let's just, uh, I want to create a larger field here. And then I want to do the same thing here. Both of these are larger fields. So I'm going to merge and center those. And then I'm going to left justify them. In fact, I'm going to left justify all of these fields right here. And then also for the email message, I want a larger field. That's probably going to go to H and down to, say, 14. So I'm going to merge the center of that, left justify, and up at the top also. And I'll do the make sure. So let's create the white fields. I'm going to hold down the control, making sure that they're all white. And then I'll give them maybe I'll just give them the black color here and then a white a white fill color here that's good that's what I want now what kind of borders do I want again hold down the control I'll use the same theme I'm gonna actually we can click this one too format the cells sorry it's a little bit off the screen giving it a border using the same theme also the same color perhaps like this all the way around and then on the left side we're gonna do a dotted line here that's what I want I'm gonna put a button set here so we have and then here on the same thing on these I'm gonna right justify them right click format the cells and then the border around these is gonna be basically on this one it's gonna be the left uh, top and right and then the right is gonna be the dotted line on those case okay that's pretty much what I want other than the solid fill we will change this to a solid on this that's gonna give it at least the same look and feel that we understand that those are the fields that we want to deal with and then I want to create some button sets so basically we have the name of the template we have the template location email subject and the message but I want to save this right I want to have multiple templates multiple emails multiple macros to run so how do we do that well we'll put it in a table below in fact we can put it let's say on row six I'm going to put it in a table right here. So I'm going to call it PDF template. So I'm going to merge the center of this and PD, 
f templates are going to be down here template name and then I want the same fields location we need we also need the macro and then I need the subject and the last thing would be the email so it'd be very simple but very powerful because it's going to store all of our templates so anytime you want to run an automated template all you need to do is select on the one from the table below and click the button to run it very very simple let's bold these since they're part of a header and then I'll give it the same uh, type of color fade that I have in the past just using this and then I'm going to use the same color theme here then we're going to be pretty much done with the look and feel of the table then we'll add the buttons on that so it'd be relatively easy I think we'll put in just about five buttons here so I'm giving them a fade just we want a table right because we want to store unlimited types of templates so I think it's really going to be helpful so because you might have multiple PDFs not just one you don't want a different application for every PDF all right good give that a border format the cells and then we're good to go on that this one is a little bit quicker design because I'm keeping it real simple on this one okay so we have that we have our, so our table is going to be down here and then we'll add some conditional formatting and I need some buttons here and then we'll have a little bit of information here and then we're going to run our automation so what kind of buttons are we can have maybe just five probably about four buttons let's create a shape on that and what we can do is just a square box and let's just say something about like right here and give it a color that's part of the theme like this and I uh, also want some let's bring in some let's bring in some uh, buttons here so what kind of buttons we want these I've got some saved up those are gonna be the five buttons for the five buttons we had and then uh, call it point two three give it a size okay we're good on that but I want this one right here I want to create as our for our application so that's gonna be one for application I'm gonna merge and center this so our headers get merged and center good now now it's starting to come to life we can see how it's gonna work but what I want to do is I want to create multiple buttons and but let's get one done and then we get, it's easier to delete so let's just call this create and send that's what I want that looks nice and let's write justify and bold it that looks good and then what I want that's a little bit bigger let's make it a little bit smaller good so what else do we want I want to duplicate that control D control D and control D I also want a button that's going to be able to browse so let's bring this one up here and uh, let's bring this one here so I want to browse for the template browse for PDF good and then I think we're gonna have to bring these icons on I want to make sure these icons are on top of the button so just by holding down the control selecting them make sure they're all on the front bring to the front here and then the third button I want to have is gonna go down here and that's gonna be called add template and then we'll have save template very very simple keeping it simple and then the last one save template that's all we want I know we could add more like delete template template okay I know we could add more like delete template but I'm just gonna keep this real simple you can clear it out yourself it's relatively simple so all right so we have add template save template here add template here we have browse for PDF here and then we have create and send that's what I want so now all we have to do is create these buttons basically format and align the middle here group them and the first thing we want to do after grouping is name them so create send button and then we have browse this one here again same thing format align the middle group and name group and name so three steps browse just call this browse button and then uh, add button I want to add this template here because I want to be able to quickly clear it out and add a template grouping it call this add template button okay and the last one then we're done with our button sets save and add are not going to be showing up at the same time so it's going to be either or so let's group it and call this save template button okay so that means we're going to put both the add and the save on the same place so i'm going to align both of those buttons in the middle and align both of them in the center and i'm going to bring them up right about here and then I want all of them buttons on the right side aligned to the right. Now we've got our button set here. Create and send, browse for the PDF, and then we have save time. Bring this down a little bit. That's it. Okay, that's it for our button sets, and we'll save what we've done so far. Okay, let's just put in some sample data, at least a template name here. Let's just call it workshop enrollment. And then uh, email subject, let's say hi. And then I want to put in dynamic name. So I'm going to put hi name. And then your workshop enrollment 
form is attached. Okay, and then just something basically, and then we can bring this down if you want to see the, what we're doing as we type in this. So we can use Alt Enter to go to the next line. Hello, and then the same thing. We're going to use the dynamic name, Hello Name. Instead of that, that's going to be their actual name, the student name. And then Alt Enter to go to the next line. And we'll say thanks so much for your interest in our workshops. And the good thing is you'll have multiple templates. Now let's see. Please fill in the attached PDF and kindly email it back to us. All right, Alt Enter, thanks again. And then comma Alt Enter. You know who's gonna sign it already, don't you? Fredders. Okay, there we go. Now we've got our email content and uh, we can bring this back up now. So we're pretty much good to go, that's it. And then all the templates are gonna be stored down here. So when we select on a template, it's gonna be displayed up here. What about our template location? How do we get that? Let's write a macro to get that. I'm gonna browse, basically what I wanna do is I wanna select on this, it's gonna browse for our macro. And then it's gonna put the file name. That's a really easy macro to write. So let's write that now into the developer, Visual Basic. Alt F11 is also a shortcut that will get you there. And it's brand new, there's nothing else here. All I have is three sheets. I've got a send key, I'll show you that soon. That's just a little help to give you some ideas. We'll go over that shortly. Insert module, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this, let's just say, we'll call this PDF macro. So to edit the name, we just have to click on the properties here. And then we'll just call this PDF macros. And I also want a one for template macros. So might as well add that insert module and we'll call this template macros. Template, I'm just call it temp macros, something short. So the name doesn't get too long. Okay, so in the template macros, we'll start off with that actually. What do I wanna do? I wanna set the PDF template, right? I wanna browse for that. So we can do that sub set PDF template. And then we'll dimension the PDF folder as a file dialog, we're using file dialog because that's going to help open it up and set that. Once we dimension it, we need to set it. Set PDF folder equals application dot file dialog, and then what is it? The MSO we want we want a file picker, right? We're not we're picking a file. I guess it should be called PDF file. Probably that makes a little more sense. I don't want to confuse you, so let's just call this PDF file. It makes more sense, right? PDF file, not folder, file. So let's make sure our dimensions are a little bit more accurate. PDF file. PDF file equals application file dialog. We're picking a file. And then what are we going to do? With PDF file, what do we want to do with it? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to give it a title. What's the title going to be? Let's just call it select PDF form. We can do that. That's fine. And then I want to give it a filter. We only want PDF, so we do need to give it a filter, dot add. I'm gonna add a filter. We'll call this PDF type files. And then comma, and then basically it's gonna be what? Anything that ends with PDF. So we're gonna use the asterisk, dot PDF. Any files that end with that. Okay, comma once. We just want uh, one, the first position. And then what I wanna know if dot show, does not equal negative one, then go to no selection, right? Negative one would be they've selected something. So then go to no selection just in case, and that's gonna cancel it out. So then we can do, just drop down no selection down here, no selection. That way it avoids any errors. So what if there is a selection? If they do select something, I wanna make sure that's put, where do I wanna put that? Sheet one, I wanna put that right here into E5. So let's write that in there sheet one dot range e5 dot value equals what equals dot selected items one just one okay so that's going to put it right there so let's run that and let's assign that to the button we just have one macro so far so i'm going to right right click this and assign the macro just the one set pdf template click okay click on that let's just make sure we spell title with title equals we need the equals there okay so let's run that again and then no selection go to obviously skip that okay we're good to go on that we can close that out browse for the button locate that's the fillable one 
And that's what we want. Now we have our fillable right here. You can see it's fillable. That's the one we want. Perfect. So now we have the right form. We'll save it. So what else do we want to do? I just before we create, I want to make sure that we can save this before we don't want to lose this. And we want we'll put this in at the end, the macro to run. But we also want to make sure to save it here. And we also want to automate it. So let's write that code in right now. So we have some more information that we want to put up here. Okay, so what do we need? We need to know if it's a template new. Template new. And that's going to be true or false false let's just put that in fact we're going to start out with true so let's put that as true actually and then next up i want to know if what the row that we selected selected row because we're going to load those so selected row is going to equal let's just put 18 for now whatever it is and then i also want to know to display the email email in fact let's what we're going to do is let's add a checkbox here into the developers insert I want to add a form control and it's nice to know if we're gonna display the email or send it right so let's just call this display email right do we display it or do we just send it right away and I'm gonna attach this specific to b5 so we're gonna format the control and I want the cell link into b5 here so that as we change this it goes true b5 true or false that's what I want let's left justify these and also I'm going to write justify these let's drop this down for a second write justify and then I'm going to color all so that we can notate that those are special cells that we need to pay special attention on okay so we've got that that's all we're going to need it's going to be very very simple now let's have some conditional formatting just a little bit of conditional formatting that's going to help us uh, see this table so I'm going to I only want to conditional format data in this table that contains values and it's going to be eh, so let's do that so we're going to go to conditional formatting, manage the rules, and I'm going to create a brand new rule. New rule, what's it going to be? Equals two conditions. And what's the first condition? I want there to be a value in D18, but that's going to be, have to be for every single row. So let's get rid of the dollar sign before 18. And do this not equal empty. And what's the second condition? I'm going to put mod equals mod, mod, let's see, uh, even rows, which would be mod, bro to and that's automated auto hotkey I use for that this is even rows zero is gonna be even so what do I want to color even rows I'm gonna give it like a light blue I'm gonna also copy this because I want it for odd rows too except for a small change so the fill on this one is gonna be this color but maybe a little bit lighter let's say here let's just say a little bit lighter here okay and click OK and just want one more rule and then we can make this 29 is fine it's fine for now new rule use a formula again pasting that making it one and this time I'm going to make it white and then format those cells and make it white just two rules that's all we need for that that's enough okay so now how does that work so now as we add data we get the formatting that's automatic which is kind of a nice look okay one more rule I want to create for that let's go back into conditional formatting new rule and then I'm going to base it on the selected row so this is going to be equals this row so when we select a row, I want that highlighted. What's the format? I want to give it a contrasting format. So I'm going to give it a fill of, let's say, a dark blue, something like this, with a fade. And I'm going to give it a font of a bold and white. So the font, bold, and white. OK, so now we have it now. So now you see how it changes, right? If we change it to 19, it'll change to 19. OK, that's what I want. Perfect. So. Now I want to be able to save. I want to save this information down to the table below. How do we do that? With just a little bit of a macro. And the best way to reduce the code with a macro is to use data mapping. So how do we do that? Well, what I want to do is I want to map template name to this. I want to add location to this. So we can use row 15 for that. So we can just do that. E3 would be this. Location would be E5. Macro would be G3. Subject would be E7, and of course the email would be E9. That's it. That's all we need to do to do data mapping. And let's center those so we can understand. And when you want to, all you need to do is change the font to blue, and it would, of course, hide it. You can't see it with the same font, just like that. We're going to keep it visible for now. So basically what I want to do is I want to take this and put it here, take this and put it here, and location put here so how do we do that inside a macro well let's focus on that and let's write that macro right now so that we can get our information saved then we're going to create our automation so this is going to be template macros here and I want to save the template so let's write a macro sub save template and we do need to know the row that's very important and dim template 
row as long. And I also need to know the column because we're gonna loop through the column. So template column as, as long. Okay, so that's all we need and we're gonna focus on with sheet one. Again, it's auto hotkey that automates that uh, with and end with. So you see that it's not part of VBA. So first thing I wanna make sure is if I wanna check, there can't be any empty fields, right? We really need a name, we need a macro, and we also need need a PDF. I, we could avoid, we don't re really need the email and the message, but we do need these three fields. So let's run a macro to make sure that E3, G3, and E5 are not empty. So actually we're gonna run some lines of code that are, so that's just one line of code. And then we can drop this down a little bit so we can see what we're doing. There we go, now we can see both. Okay, so if dot range E3, value equals empty or we can copy and paste that and just go ahead and change the ranges two times or range and then of course in this case it would be e g3 and in the last case it would be e5 so we can change that to e5 then what do we want to do then we want to let the user know then message box please fill in required required fields okay that's all and then exit sub nothing we can do if they haven't added the property information I want to know if it's new or not so that's important if it's new we need to give it a new row if it's existing we can give it the existing row and before so we can do that by checking on b3 so if dot range b3 dot value equals true then new template else and if okay so we have that now all we do so if it's new then what is the new row then the template row we equal to dot range d then 999 and dot end excel up dot row plus one that's the first available row first available row otherwise of course the row is going to be in b4 dot range template row equals dot range before good now that we've got that done so now all we need to do is run a loop i'm going to run a loop from this is column four all the way to five six seven eight now all the way to column eight and just basically take this and put it here take macro and put it here all the fields are going to come down here based on that so all we need to loop through is loop through look at the range and bring it into the row we're going to do just that inside our macro so all we need to do is now run a for next loop. So for the template column equals four to eight. Those are the column numbers. Next template column. Okay, template column, no L in there. Okay, so all we need to do is write one line of code to bring all of that data from the top form into our table. How do we do that? Dot cells template row template column dot value equals that's in our table equals what equals dot range and where is it located it's located in row 15 so dot cells i'm looking for that range dot cells 15 is the row what is the column the columns variable template column dot value that's going to bring in all of the data from the top form into the bottom table okay bring down values from form into table just that three lines of code just that loop will do that for us all right what else do we want to do then i want to basically uh wrap the text i really want to if i do that watch what happens when i when i bring in let's just run this macro what we have so far run it and then we got to fill in the record let's put in a macro name that's working perfect test and then uh, let's go ahead and run it again and take a look at it and you'll see that you see that's a big row i really don't want that so what do we want to do we want to wrap the text so everything came in just fine but i need to wrap the text so we can do that with one line of code here so also what we want to do then is simple dot range and what is the row template row template row and quotation colon quotation and template row dot, and it's not dot value it would be dot wrap text equals false right it's no we don't want to wrap the text okay so that's good so that's important and also we want to make sure so what is that going to do when we run that code all of a sudden it's going to just take this 
go to form and then wrap the text as false. So just like that, and then, then drop it down, wrap it again, and then it's gonna be false. Just like that's what I want to happen. I don't want to wrap, I want to keep things in the same line. I don't want that row to grow. So wrapping text will do just that. Okay, so what else do we need to do? Well, we need to set the button sets and we also need to know what the template row is. So I wanna make sure that the template row goes into here, B4. So let's put that now. Dot ring. It may not, if it was a new template, it may not have been. So B4 dot value equals the template row. That ensures add template row. What else? We also want to make sure that B3 is false dot range because B3 says if it's a new template or not, that equals equals false. And then all we want to do after that is just we have the two buttons. I want to make sure that the add button dot add template button dot dot visible equals true i want to make sure to show that add template button i want to hide the save one right it will no longer need to save it dot shapes save template button dot visible equals and so false so we're going to hide the template button okay there we go that's all we have to do let's go ahead and make this false right it's no longer a new template we've just saved it and uh, let's run that to make sure there's no issues Okay, it looks good, that looks right, everything looks right, it's now false, 18, perfect. Okay, so good, now we can save the templates, now we can automate the PDF, so let's do that. So how do we automate filling the PDF? Let's walk through this step by step. Anytime you're going to do something, automate a process, you wanna map it out first. So let's pull up that PDF, this is the fillable one, so what do I want to do? Well, the first step I wanna do is open the form. Let's write out all the steps, and this is what I want you to do as well write out all the steps so let's slide over here and write out some steps and to get rid of this bleed over all we need to do is add a space here and then drop it down and that gets rid of that okay so what is this step one open open the pdf right we need to open it obviously oh so what's the next step let's take a look at it. what's the next step i want to put in the student name i want to take the student name from whatever row that we're on here i want to place it right inside the template now that it's open how do we get there well, what do we need to do? Remember, when you're focused on what we're going to, we're going to be using something called send keys. And send keys means the keyboard automated keyboard shortcut. So basically, we're automating the keyboard strokes, what you would do. The best way to do that is to put away your mouse. Don't use your mouse. Find a way around the mouse. Once, we, once you map all the steps using just your keyboard, we can do it. So what I need to do is I need to, I'm going to use my mouse just to show you, but I need to access this field, right? I need to access student name. So how do I do that? Let's try pressing tab tab perfect okay that means one tab after it's open one tab to open the student name let's write that down step we're going to go step by step and i'll show you how you can map out your own process so the next step is tab now what is the next step well since we're inside we're by now we're inside the student name so we can just put in the student name student name so what's the next thing i want to do well i want to put in the student email how do we do that tab student email so let's write down those two steps tab then student email okay what's the next step the next step is tab student phone number we'll do that again tab student phone number that's all the fields i actually want to put in this form i don't want to we don't have the parent or guardian that's it now what do i want to do now i want to i want to basically i want to save it but i don't just want to save i don't want to save it as a fillable form right because it's now been filled out we've added the student name we've added the student name we've added the student phone number i'm ready to save it but we need to do save as hmm save as how can we do that let's see if there's a save as here uh there's no shortcut here but we can put it under in this. This is I'm using Foxit, but you can use anyone. I have a save as here. I've already added it here. But how do I do it? Let's take a look at that. I'm looking for the keyboard shortcut for save as. I want the keyboard. How do we automate keyboard strokes under save as? Well, if we highlight over here, it says save as control shift s all right all right so that's gonna help us if i want to i'm gonna do that right now control shift s what's gonna happen it's gonna open up the dialogue perfect okay so that's what i want so let's do that control plus shift plus s okay so we have the next step now we know it's control shift s so what do i want to do so after i press control shift up i'll do it again we're already in the file name so next up i want to put the entire file name including 
their customized name. I want to give them a custom name, right? The file, the entire file name plus the name. So let's put that in there. Entire file name. So we understand that. And what's the next step? Control Shift S again. Let's walk through the process. Now I want to save it. I want to save it. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, let's take a look at that. Let's just give it a different name just for temporarily so I can just understand the process. So I think it's going to be, let's see, let's see, here's the save, but usually it's Alt S maybe. Alt, oh, Alt S work great. So I press Alt and S. Hmm, okay, perfect. So that works out. Let's just try that again. Con Control Shift S, uh, Alt, and then S. You could also do Tab, 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 Tab. But that we could do Tab three times also and click that and click Enter. But Alt S is a quick Alt S. It's not Control S wouldn't work. Control S doesn't work. Shift S doesn't work. So you notice that there's a line under the save. That means something with S. So Alt S works just fine. And that works fine. It's already here, but we don't need to replace it. So we know Alt S works. So let's write that down inside our map step. Alt plus S. Okay, so now I know. Now I've saved it. Now this form is saved. What do I want to do? It's got the student information. What do I want to do? I want to go back up to the top and add the next student. So I really want to clear the form. Let's clear it. So we've already saved it, but let's clear it now. So how do we clear the form? Let's go look under form, reset form. I don't see any shortcut here. Hmm. Okay, there's no shortcut here, but how do we, we need a shortcut. Otherwise we can't automate the process. How do we get a shortcut? So let's try this. Press the Alt, oh, look at that, we see M. Let's press M, M, oh, perfect. So we press M, let me show you that just one more time. Pressing Alt is gonna tell us all the shortcuts. Now I wanna get to Form, so let's press M. Okay, now what do I need to do? Oh, it looks like F, if I press F, it's gonna reset the form. Let's see if that works. Let's put in some data here. Now we've got the data, now I'm gonna put in Alt, M, F. The data is clear. Perfect. So we know three different, not 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 alt at the same time, but three different times. Alt M F is going to clear that form out. That's what I want. I want to clear the form out so we can get ready for the next one. Okay, so Alt, then M, then F. Three different steps. That's going to clear. These three steps will clear our form. Okay, good. So now our form's clear. What about the next step? Now that the form's clear, what do we need to do? Tab in again. Okay, so all it is is one tab and we repeat the process. I think I've got it now. I think I've got all the steps for all these steps is going to, these are actually 13 steps that now all we need to do is input those steps inside the macros and using send keys and we can automate this PDF form. So let's do that right now. Back inside the module and let's go into PDF macros. This one we're going to want to write the first PDF macro that is. So let's call this, let's just call it sub fill workshop enrollment. Okay, that's good enough. So we can separate the different macros. All right, now we need to dimension a few files. I need to know the PDF template file, of course, if we're going to open it. So dimension the PDF template as string. And also I need to know the new PDF file. We're creating a new one. So I'm going to mention that as string also. And what else? I want the save PDF folder, save the PDF folder as string. And also let's see, we need the student name, student name as string. Those are strings that we need. We need a few more strings. So let's try it for the email to mention the subject as string and the message as string for the email as well as the email address. Let's do that, email address as string. Okay, because we need to know all that and then we'll get to the point where we're gonna automate the email too. So first of all, I wanna loop through all the student rows. So we need to dimension the, the student row and the last row. Student row, row, row as long and the last row as long. Last row as long. Okay, we need to loop through all the rows on sheet two. Okay, and we'll also dimension, we're gonna be using Outlook, so let's dimension the Outlook app as an object. We'll do late binding, and also the, the Outlook mail as an object too. Outlook mail as object. Both of those are objects. 
Okay, so now we do want to make sure that I got to make sure there's a few things we have to make sure. E5, we need, we for certainly need to know that E5 contains a value, right? We cannot open anything if we don't actually have it. So we got to check to make sure E5 contains a value. So that's the first thing what we're going to be doing. If sheet one dot range E5 dot value equals empty, then what do I want to do? Let the user know message box please select a pdf template to use right without a pdf template we can't do anything else and then what we can do is we're going to run the macro remember we're going to run this macro let's prompt the user to do it so i'm going to prompt the user to set the pdf template so let's copy this macro and let the user know that they need to browse for it and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to run another check after they've done that if even after they run that macro, if it's still empty, then exit the sub. So we can do that with if, then exit the sub. If it's still empty, then exit sub. It's like a second chance. Okay, now that we're moving on, so now we know that at least at this point that E5 now contains a value. So we can set the PDF template file, that's the one we gave it to, equals, of course, cheat one e5 value and just copy and pasted that so now we know the template file name template file name we need that right because we can't do that all right next up now we can focus on sheet two with sheet two what are we going to do i want to get the last row the last row we're going to have to loop through all of the students right so i need to know the last row in this case it's 17. so how do we do that well we get use dot range a and then 9999 dot end Excel up dot row. Okay, that's the last student row. Okay, now that we have the last row, what we can do is we can loop through those. So let's do that. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to open that PDF file. So we can do it with this workbook dot follow hyperlink. And what are we following? The PDF template file. That's the one we just created. So that's all we need to do is open that PDF file. So now it's open. Now, what do we want to do? I'm going to wait a minute. I want to give it a little bit of time. So let's 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 give it a little bit of pause to let it open completely. How do we give it some time? We can use wait now application dot wait. And then we, we, what do we want? How long do we want it now? Plus, let's say uh, just two seconds. So we use point zero point zero 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 two. So four zeros and a two. That's going to give us two seconds to wait till after it's open. Now we can start our loop. Now that we've opened it, we're ready to run our loop. So it's going to be four student row equals. We're starting, of course, on row three. That is the first student that we have, row three. And we're going to go all the way to the last row. So three to the last row. Next, and then we'll close our loop. Next student row. When you open a loop, you always want to close it. So, and then write the code in between. First of all, what I want to do is remember, I only want to send emails and fill forms out if this is blank. If there's if it's not blank, it's already been sent. So there's no form to fill out. There's no email to send. So if H and the student row equals blank, then we should continue. Otherwise, let's not. So if dot range H and the student row dot value equals empty then continue okay and if so now all of our code is going to be written inside here all of it okay so let's close that up and let's bring it forward here so that's with our sheet this is for and with sheet two this is for the next student row so all of our code is based because we have no email here so we can send it out and we want to fill the form and send it out okay so now we're ready to write our code our, our templates open so what do we want to do let's look back to our map and see first we need to get some information from this row we need what do we need we need the student name we need the email we need the we need so we need to get let's pull the information and, and fill up our variables first before we start automating the PDF. So we can do that with this letter code. The student name we know is located in E equals dot range look at an A, I should say, A in the student row. Okay, so we know the student name is there, and so we can let's call that student name. And what else do we need? We need the student email address, so email address where is that located that is located in column f so we can get that put that in so we'll just copy this and then we'll put change it to f equals and then change it to 
f and that we have the email address let's call this email address okay so now we have i'll save it and then now we have our email address what else do we need i want the email subject in line i want to pull the email that's on sheet one i want the subject which is in e7 and i want that message which is located in e9 so let's get those subject equals sheet one remember we got to go back to sheet one range what range is it e7 dot value okay that's the subject but what i really want is i what if they've put in the name i want to replace this name with their actual name and in here in the message too so how do we do that well we can use the replace so let's wrap that in replace replace we're going to replace this what are we replacing we're replacing anywhere that it says name just like that what are we going to replace it with we're going to replace it with the actual student name student name so that's what we want to replace that's actually so that's the subject the subject whatever's in e7 but if it's if name is found i want to replace it with the actual student name and i can do the same thing with message so let's do that let's just copy and paste that in fact this one i'll just change to message and of course this is going to be e9 okay so now we have email subject and we have email message and we also know that anywhere it says that the name we're going to replace with the actual student name and that's all into the string so now we have that now we have all of that information so what do i want to do i want to set the new pdf file name where are we going to save it? i want to set the file name remember when we opened up we need to set a pdf file name remember when i used uh control shift s right we save it we need the file name i can't save it where it is but i want to save it into a location and with a specific name like a unique name so let's set that up right now let's set that unique name up what should it be new pdf file equals and i want this to work in your workbooks too so i'm going to set it to this workbook because that's a good location this workbook means whatever location the current workbook is at we're going to use that as the default you can change it of course this workbook dot path i want to know the path of the workbook and what so we're going to include the path and what else i also want to include a backslash right and what maybe a file name maybe the student name something different student name and then maybe something on the form and let's just say enrollment because we're going to email it to them let's just call it enrollment okay so we've got enrollment but i want to know it's got to be we've got to put the extension on dot pdf that's important too so that's going to give us our new file name for the pdf that's a fillable pdf with their information now we've put that into a string variable. So that's gonna add, help us as we add it in later. So what do we need to do next? Next, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that this doesn't already exist. If the same name and the same file and the same location exists, we're not gonna be able to save it. So we need to remove it already. So if let's find out if it exists. If directory new PDF file VB directory does not equal empty if it's not empty then what do i want to do then kill it kill it kill kill means delete kill and what do i want to do kill i want to kill this new pdf file so i'm going to kill it now it's going to delete the file if it exists deletes file if exists because we can't save it as it's going to create an error if it exists delete file if exists so now we've deleted the file good so what do i want to do then well the first thing i really want to do is i want to make sure that this form is clear it's very important that the form itself is clear remember we need to do that we need to clear the form all the way and we clear the form using alt mf but we do that at the end but i really want to do it in the beginning why do i want it? just in case because as we loop through it so let's add clearing the form and let's make that the first thing we do and that's going to help us so we can do that with the following lines of code the first thing i want to do is just add a little bit of weight and you'll want to add a lot of weight and then as you wait times and then as you develop it you can reduce the wait times to make it faster but we always want to start with a lot so let's clear the form first clear form and how do we do that well the first thing i want to do is application we can actually copy this we we don't have to keep rewriting it application and then maybe just one second is fine and then since it's already open and then what do i want to do i want to write a send key so application dot send keys and what what's the key that we want to send well what do i want to do to clear the form i need to use the word alt how do i get alt in there well i've got a code for you that's going to help you alt and i put it in here in our third sheet so what was alt alt is the percent sign 
Control is the caret, shift is the plus. So we know this is gonna help you map out on sheet three. So all I need to do is put in the percent sign. So let's do that. So the send keys would be quotation, percent, quotation. Okay, and what next? And next is, let's take a look at our map. What do we need to do next? Next is the M and next is the F. So let's do that right now. So let's just copy and paste this application send keys. I'm going to put in an M and then an F. M and then F. But I want to do, I want to put a little bit of a wait. I always like a delay and it's easier to add time because things don't mess up. So let's put a little bit of a delay in between these. Okay, just in case. It's okay if it runs slow in the beginning. We can add speed later. We can remove these. So this is going to clear our form out. What do we want to do next? Next, now I'm ready to add the fields in. So let's put in add fields. And how do we add the fields? Well, the first thing is, let's put in again. Uh, let's take a look at, remember the first thing we had to do once we clear the fields? Well, it's already open. So the first thing we have to do is tab. So how do we add the tab? Let's add that in. Let's just copy this here and then we'll, we'll update it to the tab key. Okay, so we, it's not M in this case, but it's tab. So we can add tab with, again, let's just use the brackets tab, close the brackets, and then quotation marks. So that's going to tab it over. And then comma true. We want to wait. We want to make sure wait and then until we continue. That's very important. Okay, so now that we've tabbed over, what do I want to do? I want to put in the student name. So in this case, all we need to do is copy this, paste it down here, and then put in the student name. What is the student name? We've already defined it up here, so we just need to copy that and put it in here. And again, a space and wait. We do want to wait on that. True. Wait, we always want to wait until the next step. Okay, so now we have the student name. Now again, let's just again copy the wait, moving you know, we want to make sure there's enough time to, let's put that at two seconds. Let's give and make sure we have enough time to enter the full student name. This long name, if it's a long name, it might take a little longer. So what's the next step? Let's load our math step. Student name, tab again, and then student email. Tab and student email. Okay, so let's write that in. All we need to do is just copy this and then paste it down here and then replace the variable. Instead of student name, we're going to put in email. So let's do that. Email address. Okay, so now what's the next step? Let's take a look back and again, another tab and the phone number. Okay, okay, always add the weight. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically just copy this over, paste it in here, and instead of email address, what do I want? I want the student phone number, right? Our next step, right, is student phone number here. So how do we add in the student phone number? Well, our student phone number is located inside our table. Let's take a look at that. We know we have the row. It's located here under G. So let's do that. G dot range G and the student row and the student row dot value. Okay, so this is our phone number, but let's take a look at our phone numbers. Our phone numbers are not formatted. What if we want to format them? Let's give it a format. I want to pick it, notice the format in Excel, but I don't want it to look like this inside the form. I want it to actually be formatted. So we can do that. Let's add some formatting to the phone number. So we can do that with format. And what's the format that we want to assign? In this case, I want to give it a specific format. Let's do pound one, two, three, and then dash, one, two, three, dash, and then one, two, three, four. That's gonna give it a specific format. And that's what I want, just basically the format that I want. And then of course, true. That is gonna give it our phone number. Let's put the phone number. Okay, so we have our phone number in, and that's all that we really wanna do. Again, let's add another wait time here. We'll probably reduce these down to one second, because two's a little bit slow, but it's good if you're, we're watching it and we're doing it live. Okay. Okay, now we have all the formats. Now we have our student name, we have our email, and we have our student phone number. What do I want to do now? Now I want to do save as, right? So what is the next step? Let's look at our let's look at our map. Control Shift S is our next step. So let's add that inside a line of code. So how do we do that? Again, we're going to use send keys, and we can just copy this and then make the updates accordingly. So in this case, what do I want to do? Control shift and then s so caret plus and then the s so let's write that inside the code here all right so we'll clear this out so we want the control which is that up there caret shift 
which we know as a plus, and then S. So we can put that in parentheses, S. So Control Shift S. That's how we get the save dialog to pull up. Now we have the save dialog pulled up. And let's again, let's wait another two seconds. And then what do I want to do? Then I want to put inside our name, right? What do we, what's our name? I want to, we have it already up here. It's called new PDF file right here. I want to put that in. It's already up, right? So as soon as we launch this control shift S, the next thing is to put in this name the new PDF file, it's already ready for that. So that's all we need to do. So we just need to translate that into the send keys. So we can do that here. Paste this, application send keys, copy this, paste it in here, put a space in there, and then in this case, we just wanna also make sure it's true. True. Okay, so that's going to get us our information. That's going to put in the new, and let's wait a little bit because this is a long name. So I'm going to add uh, three seconds on this or three tenths. There. So now we can, so it's going to wait for that to fill all in because you notice it's going to take a little bit of time on that to fill in that long name. Now, what do we want to do? Let's look at the next step. Now that we have that, we enter the file name Alt S. Alt S. We know Alt to be the to be the percentage so that and s is what we need to do alt s is what we need to do to save it so we can do that right now we can just copy this one it's close and then we'll modify it accordingly alt would be the percentage so in this case is the percentage and then s percentage and s and that is we'll just mark that as save as okay that's the save as button and now we will go ahead and just wait a few seconds let's wait let's put in another wait here to give it some time to save and what's the next now we're done we're done with the code it's saved everything's saved right so what do we want to do now now i want to create the email let's create the email now we've done our form why don't we just take a before creating our email let's take a look at that and see how we've done so far and make sure but what do i want to do i want to put the macro name here the macro we just created i want to put it it's called fill workshop enrollment it's a bad name let's could just just call it fill workshop form I like that better okay fill workshop so I want to take this macro and I want to put it right in here because this is the macro that's going to run this specific form but now I need to take this macro and I want to write a macro that's going to run whatever's here so let's just write that real quick so we'll write it up here it's a very simple macro so let's just call this sub create send template Okay, and what is it that I really want to do? I just want to run whatever's in sheet one dot range G3. Whatever's in there, I want to run that. And hopefully they've entered it correctly, or else it'll be an error. So whatever's in G3, we're going to run. Okay, so now all I need to do is right click. This way we can run different macros. Let's assign the macro, and we'll call it create and send template. Okay, let's save our work so far, and then let's see if there's any issues with this. All right, it opened up a form. Take a look, it's clearing the form and it's putting in the name, putting in the email, putting in the phone number, saving, saving it. That works good. Nice. Okay. Looks good. Clearing the form out. Let's go into the next one. Go into the next one. We didn't, you know, we didn't add the email. Go into the next. Perfect. That's what I like, David Davis. All right, it looks very, very good. We've done a good job with this so far. We still need to add an email and do a little bit more work, but it looks good. That's just what I want, and it's only done two. Why is it only done two? Because it's only done two. There's only two students where our if statement. There's only two, so John and David. Those are the only two students. Okay, it looks good. Uh, we got to close out this last one, and we would want to. We want to make sure that when we're completed, we want to close out the form. So we still have some work to do, but we've done pretty good so far. Let's close all this out and continue with our code. Let's create the email. And then what we'll do is we will then close it out. Create email. How do we create the email? Well, again, we've already dimensioned the Outlook objects, but now we just need to set them. So set the Outlook app equal to what? Create object. What kind of object are we creating? We're going to call it the Outlook application. So Outlook dot application. That's going to create the application, but it won't create the email. So we do need to create the email now. Set the Outlook email to what? Equal the Outlook application dot create 
item zero, which is the email. So we're gonna create that item. And once it's created, we can then work with it. So with Outlook email, what do we wanna do? First thing I, would, I wanna set the two. Two is gonna be equal to the email address. The next thing is gonna be the subject. We know the subject. I think we would just have a subject here. Subject equal to subj that's the abbreviation we've saying the message is next which is body actually call that body in email body equal to the message and then what i want to do i want to add an attachment right we want that form we want to attach that form that we just created dot attachments dot add what are we adding new pdf file that's the one we just created we're adding that file and then what I want to do is I want to know should I send it right away or should I just display it obviously for our purpose in this training we're just going to display it, but it's going to be based on this remember we have this checkbox display email or not so b5 is b5 is true we are going to display it so let's write that in the code if sheet one remember we need to define sheet one range b5 dot dot value equals true then dot display else dot send else is going to send let's just write send or display email that gives users an option all right that's it that's all we need to do with the email and let's take a look and all what i also want to do is once we've sent the email i really want to add the date the current date in here because we want to let it know exactly when the email is sent so we're going to in h and whatever the student row is we are going to put the date so let's do that now sheet we're still we're already in sheet view dot range h and the student row dot value equals what is it going to equal we'll just call it now set current date and time we want to know when it was sent out but what i what the problem is once we have the email once i have the email i really want to go back to the application right i really want to go back to the PDF actually right so we have the email that was launched but I can't start sending the keys unless I go back to the Foxit reader right this is our PDF application I need to go back there for the next one so how do we activate it again because we just activated the email so I gotta go back here we can use something called app activate it's gonna activate our PDF reader so whatever PDF reader you're using you want to activate it so app activate in this case it's called Foxit, I'm using Foxit Reader. That is the name of the application that I'm using. So Foxit Reader, you can find the name when you right click or when you hover over it, you can see what name it is. So app back, so that's gonna activate it. Okay, that looks very good. And then we got end if, and then our next student row. And the last thing we do need to write a little bit of code. Once we get out of it, what do I wanna do? I wanna quit this application, right? Once. Once we get it, get it. I need to quit it. How do I quit this? I don't want to close this application. Well, what basically what I want to do is close it. And then, so if we say, let's take a look if we can find some close it. Usually it's control Q or something like that. So I think that's going to work just fine. But I want to see if, if they've, if it's visible here somewhere. I don't see it. Control Q usually works. I don't see where they have the shortcut here. It's not listed. I know it's control Q because I work with this application. Almost all applications are control Q. It's easy to test it. Just hit control and Q and see if it closes. Okay, so we know control Q. It's easy to test out. We know control Q just close it out. So let's write that in there. So application dot send keys again our control which of course is our carrot here and then q that's going to close our and then parentheses q which is going to close it and then true again all right and then also there's one other line I, I like to write sometimes there's a number lock issue when i run these send keys the number lock on your keyboard obviously gets disabled so that can happen sometimes so if it does let's just write uh, some code to do that application uh, it's just something that I've seen many, many times. So send keys. And then just to redo it, send keys. And then we just need to do this number number lock. And then what we do is we're going to do Alt S. Alt, which is a percentage, and then S. That's going to automatically set the number lock back just in case it happens. Okay, I think we're just about done with our code. Let's take a look. Let's save it. 
and let's run it let's just uh, let's run it for these two and see what we do in fact our it was a little bit slow which is good we want it slow but let's speed things up a little bit change these to one because everything worked okay so we can speed it up just a little bit here C and change this to two and change it to two. and if there's any issues then we can just slow it down again so let's create and send variable not defined outlook email Oh, it's outlook mail not outlook email right outlook mail okay good that's fine and uh, here outlook mail here also okay good that looks right let's reset the code try it again create and send open our application up it's going to clear the form out and again like I said you can speed this up but we always want to start slow and and build up speed as we we do okay so that worked out the first one now the email gets created I'll show you the email in a second let me just let it run through its code on itself I don't want to mess it up but the email did get created it's just behind it I'll bring it in front and the second and the second email got created. Okay, so now you can see everything looked good. Let's just take a look. Here's I'll bring them to the screen, the emails that got created. So John James, his email got created. Let's open his PDF and look. John James email workshop. That looks very good. Close that out. And we'll close the email out. The emails display just as I wanted them to. They didn't send. David Davis, let's open up his PDF. David Davis, his email, good, that got done. Close that out, we don't need to save the changes. Look at our students, make sure the date and time got done, Saturday, April 11th, that's the current date and time. Good, everything looks really good. So that is how we automate the PDFs. Now all we need to do is a few more things to update this. I just wanna be able to, you to make sure you can add templates, a few more macro stick with me, because this is gonna be really awesome. So let's make sure that we can add macros. We know we saved it. All we need to do is create a new one. Let's write that additional macros now, and then I'm gonna let you go. Just two more tiny macros. So what do I want to happen? When I select on a specific template, I want it to load here. When I click add template, I want it to clear all the fields so we can put in a new template. Let's write those two macros real quickly right now. That's all we need to do, and then I'm gonna make sure you get this application. I'll include the links down below. So let's sub add template. Let's write these macros real quick because all we need to do is clear out. So first thing we want to do is set B3 to true. That's going to tell us if it's a with sheet one. First thing we want to do is B3 dot range. B3 is true. I want to set this to make sure it is a new template, a new. So set to set new template to true. And what else? I want to clear some fields. So dot range. What are the fields that I want to clear? All the fields. E3, E, G3. I want to do E5, E5, but make sure that when we clear the merge cells, we include all the cells. So that'd be E5 through G5, G5. Let's take a look at that, I think if I remember correctly. So we want to do E3, G3, E5 through G5, E7 through G7, and E9 through H14. So let's write all that inside the code right now. So E5 through G5, e7 through g7 and then the last one of course is e9 through h14 and of course i want to clear all those fields we're going to do that so we're going to say dot clear contents that's going to clear all the fields okay once we have the fields clear all we need to do is i'm going to select on e3 that's the first one dot range e3 that's going to give us the name e3 dot select select that and then also I want to just update the buttons now we know this these are the buttons here so let's just copy these but in this case we're going to reverse it we want the add template we want it we just added one so we're going to show that we're going to hide that but we want the save one to be visible dot see true save to be visible that's it that's all we have to do and then assign that to the button so right click assign a macro add template click OK save our work especially when we're using clear content save it click add template it looks very good we selected e3 that's what i want okay now all we need to do is write let's say test one we don't have another macro but just called test macro and then location and then subject and then message just want to make sure we put in some now all we need to do is save the template well we've already written that macro here so let's just write it copy that we know it because if it's a new, make sure that this is new, and then right-click this, assign the macro, and again, save the template. So now let's save it, and it's perfect. It worked great. Okay, the last thing I want to do is when I select here, I want to load the template up here. We can use that. Now, 
how do we do that? Let's write a macro to load the template. Last macro we have to do in this training. So again, sub load template. Dimension, we need the template row as long and the template column. Just as we did, we're going to run through the columns as long. So once we have that, we're going to focus on with sheet one. What are we doing on sheet one? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that B4 contains a row. I cannot load if there's no row here. We have to load it. We need to know the row that was selected. B4 is going to tell us that. So if dot range B4 dot value equals empty, then exit sub. Okay, so we know B4 contains a value. Next up, template row is equal to what? B4, the one we just said. So that's going to be the template row. What about the column? The column is going to be the same as what we did on the save as. Let's go up here and copy that. Again, we're just going to reverse. The template column is going to be 4 to 8. We're going to loop through those. But this time, we're not taking not taking the cells up here and bringing them into the bottom. We're doing the reverse. We're bringing the information from the table below and putting it up. So let's actually reverse that. I'm going to drag it over here and then I'm also going to drag over the equals right here and bring it right into here. So basically we have the top, the top form cells here is equal to the bottom, right? That's bring up, up the values from table below. Okay, that's all we're doing now. So that's going to now, and then all we need to do is to set our buttons again. Again, our buttons are no longer this. It's going to be basically, we would an existing button set, so we can copy that, right click, click it on, paste it in there. Okay, so now we have that. And when do we want to run this? I want to run this when user makes a selection. When they make a selection where? when they make a selection from D18 all the way to H, but I want to make sure that D contains a value. So let's write that in the selection. Templates, again, worksheet, selection change. If not, what is the row? D what? D what? D18 through H and down. D18 through H, and let's just call it 999. And what? And I want to make sure D contains a value. And range D and the target dot row contain a value, right? What is it? Dot value does not equal empty. Okay, so what do I want then? What do I want to do? First thing I want to do is on whatever row that you selected, I want to put it right here into B4. So range B4 dot value equals the target row. Next thing I want to do is I want to run our macro to load the template. So I'm just going to paste it in there. That's it. That's all we have to do. Again, save our work. And now let's go ahead and select on the template. That's exactly what I want. Perfect. All right. Maybe I'll keep these open for you guys to see. You can see that how I map them. I'll keep them here for you so you can see. All right. That's going to do it for this training. Thanks so much. I always appreciate your shares, your likes, and your followings. If you do want to support this channel, I would extremely appreciate it. We have 100 of my best workbooks for just $37. It's a great deal, so I'll include the links down below. Again, thanks so much, and we will see you next week.